What do you think about when you're chipping down on a hillside? <clears throat> so loaded question actually, but I'll try to keep this one as brief as I can. I think it depends on which side of the hill that I'm on. The main thing is keeping your balance in the same spot where you're not, you know, I love having 60 to 70% of my weight on my left side. I don't want to try to lift out of it. I don't want to try to lean into it anymore. Um, and especially when it comes into hills that just, it's an added element that can make that so much harder. Where if I've got the ball below my feet, I actually sometimes, even though it's kind of the antithesis, antithesis of what you would think you would do is I actually drop my right foot back. So I feel like I'm able to turn the corner a little bit. And then I always love having the ball above my feet because then I feel like I'm able to throw it underneath. So a lot of it, you know, that's how I do it. But like I said, the main thing is just keeping your weight in the same spot um, and not varying in how you're standing, you know, away from the golf ball. So ball's a little bit below my feet here and it's actually mainly downhill. Um, you know, like I said, the main thing with these is keeping your weight in the same spot. Because if I, say if I've got kind of a super wide stance, I might try to help lift this thing in the air, which that's no good, then I lose the bottom of where I'm trying to chip this. So for me, like my little cheat is I'll actually drop my right foot back so then I feel like I'm able to rotate as much as I want um, and get around the corner a little bit better. Because I've always had a habit of trying to help my chips up as well. So you know, when this goes, when I have, when I drop my right foot back, I'm really almost 90, 10 on my left foot. So then I'm able to feel like I'm staying there and then I'm just rotating around a corner. So like I said, main thing, especially on side hills, downhills, uphill, is just keep your weight in that same spot. What short game tip do they most often give their pro-am partners that helps them? So two things that I always say, one of them I've already mentioned where a lot of it is keeping your weight forward on your left or on your front foot, you know, 70, 30, 80, 20, 60, 40, whatever works. Um, the second part of it is, and I always love telling people this, is to stand closer to the golf ball because a lot of people want to try to help it in the air. They stand too far from it. They get out of their posture. So a lot of times what I'll have, have people do is I'll have them choke up a hair and stand close to it. So now they can almost feel like it's more of a putt and then you're using the loft to get the ball in the air. Here's, a, here's actually a really good one. How often do you replace your wedges? So I change my 60 once a month, change my 55 probably once a quarter, and my 50 maybe once a quarter, maybe once every five or six months. And that's just based off usage. The other part too is, you know, we're fortunate enough that we've got Aaron in the truck. So, you know, that helps a lot too, having the best in the business making our wedges. But the other part is, is that the last thing I wanna do is being rough and, you know, not be able to stop a golf ball after you know, six weeks of using that 60 degree, you know, every little detail matters. And so that's really the main thing. You know, when you see us hitting really cool shots that spin a bunch, you know, one aspect of it is we have clean grooves. Second aspect of it is we have fresh grooves. And so, um, you know, especially replacing the wedge that you use the most, that's going to affect your game the most. And so for me with my 60 using it 90% of the time around the greens, like I've got to replace that as much as I can. It's hard because it's so good having a fresh wedge in your bag that it's like, it's just nothing like it where it's like, you get to hit really cool shots and spinners and whatnot. And then once I kind of lose, like where I notice it is on full swings out of the rough from like a hundred yards with a six, with a 60 degree. So like if I all of a sudden, hit one ball that comes out tumbly that I maybe didn't think was going to be tumbly, I probably am getting on that edge of that one month, but I always switch the week before majors too. So just have the fresh grooves. This is another good one. What is the best way to feel different distances from a hundred and in? So a lot of guys will use a clock system where, you know, like for me, I have like four or five different swings with each wedge, which then will give me kind of these, like Greg Rose call, calls them drunk blind numbers, which I always loved where it's like, okay, you know, let's say I blind you and I've got 78 yards and you have to hit a sand wedge, how do you hit that? And so a lot of that has to do with, you know, how we practice, you know, I'd probably say that a lot of the guys out on tour, when they're on the range, they're either doing wedge distance work or they're doing block work in the sense that they're trying to make their golf swing, you know, they're working on a certain move in their game. And so getting those feelings of, of how far I should take a club back and how far they're actually going, that's why you see guys using track bands or quads, you know, whatever distance measuring device that they have with them to see how far they're actually hitting those shots. Um, you know, cause the difference is, you know, if I'm trying to hit something 78 and I hit it at 82, you know, pins are pretty hard on tour. You know, that, that could be the difference in me having a 10 foot birdie look and me having to try to scramble for par. What's your go-to 60 to 80 yard shot? So my 60 degree that I hit where I go parallel arms to the ground and parallel on both sides, um, that goes roughly about 75. And so that's kind of like, if I'm looking for a number to lay up to, 
type thing. Uh, really, that's kind of where I'm looking is I wanna try to hit one of those numbers that I love with my wedges. And you know, I've, I've added in more over the last couple of years of hitting more 55s to try to knock off spin just so I don't have to manipulate the club as much. If I'm trying to hit a sand wedge 75 yards, I feel like I'm hitting a 60, you know, 65, let's say, but it's the same swing just with a longer club. So that versatility is something that, you know, I could mention with Aaron, where now that I have three working wedges, you know, throwing the pitching wedge four, now I have more shots, but it's making sure that I'm really, really, really good at them as opposed to having, you know, 25 shots in the bag and I've practiced them a few times, you know. I, so, you know, you add it up and if I've got four swings with, my, you know, my three Vokey wedges in the bag, I'm looking at 12 shots. So that's basically 12-ish distances that I can try to hit it to, which is, is really nice. So probably if I've got 75 yards, you know, with this pin, thankfully it's kind of the middle of the green. Like I want to try to get this within 10 feet every time. Um, you know, the real, the real kind of kicker with that is just a lot of its pin location. So, you know, like if this one's tucked over a ridge, you know, might hit it to, you know, 15, 18 feet and be happy. But, you know, with this pin in the middle of the green, like, you know, 75 yards, um, you know, this is kind of the shot that I practice at home all the time, like on track, man. And so my feel for parallel to parallel, I don't have a lot of wrist hinge in it. It's all body motion. Um, but it's, again, it's just making things a lot more simple. All right, so how to hit the one bounce and stop. So this is kind of situational because of course everyone's always asking tour, pl tour players like how you get spin. I mean, rule number one, fresh grooves. It's why pros switch grooves as much as they do is just because, you know, obviously we're lucky enough that, you know, we have access to, you know, the clubs that we need. But then the other part of it is fresh grooves create more spin, clean grooves create even more spin. And then from there, it's also line shot dependent. So if I'm going to try to spin a golf ball as much as I possibly can from a like fairly basic lie, like here's kind of my rules of thumb that I go to. I get my hands a little bit higher. I stand just a hair closer to it. And then basically what I try to feel is that I'm creating, I'm trying to keep the ball in the face as long as I possibly can. What I mean by that is that I'm actually not gonna hit down on it very hard. I'm gonna try to keep the ball on the face. And what I mean by that is keeping this club as low to the ground as I possibly can. So if I'm gonna hit this and let's say I'm gonna go to the second flag and I'm gonna try to fly this over the hill and get to stop quick. It's just like I said, it's hands just a hair higher and then I'm gonna to try to feel not a lot of wrist hinge, but I'm gonna to try to keep the club basically as low to the ground as I can. Because what's gonna happen is, is if that club stays horizontal to the ground and the ball stays on the face, now we're creating a bunch of friction, which makes a lot more spin. I wanna add a little check on a little bit of help from the hill, but that's like the max amount of spin that I'm gonna create from something like this. So if I wanna to try to hit something where I'm gonna to try to stop that faster, then I've gotta do it with height. Um, but really like a lot of guys when they're chipping, especially on tour, we're actually trying to hit shots where we know how they're gonna react on the green. We're not going for, you know, like, oh, just hit your basic shot and just figure out a landing, landing spot. Well, the landing spot is dependent off of where we hit it to. So like that one, I'm trying to land a foot short of the hole. If I want to hit something, if I had to even hit it higher and softer or get it to stop faster, then I have to go higher. Um, you know, like front pin, for example, right here real quick. Um, you know, like this is one that again, I'm gonna try to drive this, you know, I'm not, like even on that one, I barely took a divot, you know, and it's not about, you know, like I'm still descending into the ball pretty steep, but I'm also keeping the club as low to the ground as I can so the ball stays on the face. Jordan does it better than anybody, or Jordan Spieth does it better than anybody on tour. Um, where he'll have something like this and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, how is he gonna hit this shot with a square face? And the reality is that's how he does it, is he tries to basically keep the balls on the face as long as he possibly can. Something like that. Game plan for tight lies. So I love this. This is something that especially playing on Bermuda, um, you know, that you don't get perfect lies like we do out here. We're on rye. Um, really, if you get struggling with trying to get good contact, I actually practice this at home where I'll just throw balls in divots. Um, 
because if I throw them in a divot, I then have to really focus on my one spot that I'm trying to hit it to, or trying to hit into the ball. The second big part of it is you can't have your hands higher, high enough. So if I go in, I take a wedge and it's sitting square, this thing's gonna dig every single time. But if I get really close to it and really vertical and almost feel like the toes down and the heels up, I can be as steep as I want and it's never gonna dig. So I'll do this just off of like a basic, you know, basic shot going to the one in the middle. But if this is a really bad lie, I'm gonna choke up on it. I'm gonna get my hands as close, as vertical as I can. And then from there, it's really just one big shoulder turn. And so like that's one where it's like if you're playing to miss it just because it's not sitting that good. And so again, I'm, I'm getting rid of the one that I'm gonna skull. I'm getting rid of the one, you know, you can still skull it if you got your hands high, but the big one is hitting it fat where that's a killer. You know, you, you can get away with hitting it a hair thin every now and again, but if you hit it fat, you got no chance. What's your favorite shot to play around the green? So my coach taught me this a couple years ago and you know, guys, there's certain guys on tour who like feeling like they're right hand rotates underneath where it's almost like a draw feel. So I actually love being able, like if I'm going to this front flag to where I'm actually gonna feel like I'm throwing my hands underneath it to create loft. And that's a tough thing to tell an amateur, but it's also, you have to re realize what I'm doing is that I'm basically, I'm not rotating the face at all. I'm actually just turning and then creating loft with my hands going this way. So you'll see the club almost finish like this. But I love doing it because it's actually not that hard of a shot. If, you know, the drill that you would do is actually take your back foot back and basically feel like you're just standing on your left side. And so I'm able to throw my hands underneath it and it'll actually stop pretty quick. Um, but I love having, love having that feel of a shot where if I'm going to this front flag, I'm able to throw my hands kind of underneath and it's just very soft. You know, there's not a lot of super abrupt you know motion with it it's just very soft hands and that's you know that goes back to grip pressure where you have to have the feeling of it soft but as long as i don't move my my weight where i don't fall back lean forward or go this way or that way you should have good contact every time how to hit the low spinning chip shot so it's always a crowd pleaser when we have a ball that you know bounces like five times and then checks this goes back to the same thing with spin. You know, it's got to be the right lie. It's got to be the right wedge. It's got to be the right situation. Um, but really, if I'm going to hit something and let's say I'm, I'm going to go to this far back flag and I'm going to try to run something up this hill and get to stop quick, again, I'm trying to keep the ball on the face as much as I can. If I want to get, if I want to get height, then I open it up. But if I'm going to try to get a ball that's going to come out low, I've got to have the club sitting like this and then I'm gonna drive it down my line. This one, you're allowed to obviously take more of a divot and drive through it a little bit more. And then vice versa, if I'm gonna try to hit something that's low and running, that's when I'll go to longer clubs and then I hit basic chips because it just doesn't have a time to, to check. So on this one, I'll put the ball basically almost midline with my back foot. Weight's still about 70, 30 on my left side. And then I feel basically feeling like I'm hitting down on the ball, but I'm still rotating through. It's not just a throw down into the ball. I've still got to get a little bit of release through it so I can get some distance. Oh, this is a great question. Uh, if you could only have one wedge in the bag, what degree and grind would it be? <sighs> this one's hard because I love my 60. I, we've spent a lot of time getting that right. You know, like JT spends, a, he'll have a K grind for softer conditions or maybe fluffier bunkers. And if it's super firm, he'll carry a T. I love playing the T and that's just personal preference. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever works. Um, I love the T cause I'm able to be on really firm ground and feel like I'm able to, you know, dig into that turf. I don't feel like it's gonna bounce. And then if I'm on soft, I'm still able to open it up and have a little bit more of the bounce where it sits like this, where I know it's not gonna dig. Um, but it, it's kind of funny because if I've done like some, you know, three, four club challenges or whatever, and I always take my 56 because that's the most versatile club I have in the bag. I can, I, you know, that's a club that I can hit long bunker shots with, short bunker shots with. I can hit them anywhere around the greens and get the same amount of spin. So really like, you know, so I play a 6008T um, and then I've got a 5410S grind, but it's bet back to 55. Um, and just having that little extra bounce will help too. just, you know, having a little bit more variability around the greens.